Hello everyone, this is Nick Reyes coming with your brand new video. This time we're going to be talking about making custom vehicles. In the last two videos, we talked about how to make a basic custom unit. In this case, it was this infantry soldier. We went through stuff like make frame animation, attacks, and most of the well, basics on how to make a unit. Now we're going to be moving on to vehicles, which we're going to be talking about turns, uh, damage, area of effects, as well as actions, converting one unit to a different unit which you can use to make upgrades and variety of unit types or stuff like switching ammunition type. And then we'll go into balancing features and such. So I'm first gonna go over these tanks. So we have the Taros light tank, counting light tank that can be deployed for anti-air, used for harassing and scouting. So this tank is the fastest out of the bunch. It also has the lowest health and least amount of armor, as well as a pretty low range. Now, the main reason for him is that this attack that it has, 30 damage, is an area of effect attack. So what you do is you have a group of them, and if they attack, say, a small army or small group of units, it'll deal damage to all of them. Even though it's not a lot of damage, they're used to shoot and then run, shoot and then run. So they all get damaged, unless you have a repair unit next to that group of units, or it causes them to return to base, it slowly whittles down the entire party. Same thing for air units when it's deployed. Also when it's deployed it gains more health and slightly more armor. But you don't want to use that too much as it kind of goes against the whole fact that it's pretty fast. Next we have the Gemini tank, which is more of a main battle tank in this aspect. It's got decent amount of armor, got decent amount of health, decent speed, decent damage. But unlike the other two tanks, the Taros and the Leo, which we'll get to in a moment, it has a light flak. Now, the flak in this point isn't made to just go after aircraft. And when I say that, I mean it's not a main weapon. This is not an anti-air vehicle. That's because it doesn't, if you notice, the attack on the anti-air isn't that much to begin with. But it's also area attack. So if you have two, three helicopters attacking, it'll be able to deal damage to all three of them. Now, the main use for this was is to negate harassing aerial units, like the helicopter. So if a Leo or Taros got attacked by the a helicopter, yeah, the Taros can deploy, but the Leo can't do anything about it. With the Gemini, it can keep moving towards its objective, and the Flak will be able to damage the helicopter. When you have a bunch of these in a group, they can work decently to take out harassing air vehicles. Unless you get into something like oh, anything that has long range, or if they have a bunch of them. If the enemy is like amassing an army of aircraft, a few Gemini with this is not going to do it. But it also has the ability to change to high explosive ammunition, which changes the reload speed a bit. But what mainly does is it changes the attack to be more of an area attack instead of pinpoint. So that's mostly used more effectively against infantry or like light tanks like Taros. If you're going against more heavier units, then armor piercing is definitely the way to go. And next we move on to the heaviest, most armor, most health, far slower than the other two, the Leo heavy gun carrier. The main difference between all these tanks and the Leo is this tank and the Taros both have an angled arc, meaning they can only shoot forward at an angle, which means the Taros can only shoot at an angle unless it's deployed. Once the Taros is deployed, then it removes that restriction and it can shoot all around 360 degrees. It's not needed as much with the Taros because the Taros can just shoot and whoop out of there, but the Gemini takes a little bit longer to turn, and since it's the main battle tank anyway, it's not really going to be running way too much. The Leo Heavy Gun Carrier, on the other hand, due to its increased armor and, well, the fact that it's not going to be running away from anything needs to have the 360 degree gun turn so if it's running away and enemy shooting it from behind it'll still be able to shoot back at the enemy chasing it something that the leo and gemini can't do it also has a decent damaging gun more damage than both the gemini and the taros's gun though it has slightly longer reload next thing is this one unlike the other two can actually change into a completely new unit. So this is the anti-tank version of the Leo gun carrier. And the way this works is it has two cannons. It has this small stub nose cannon up front, which has this range, which by the way, that's what these circles mean. So the outer circle is the main gun and this inner circle is the flat cannon. And this one, the inner circle is this snub nose Gemini turn which also has a very short arc. And this longer range is the longer barreled Gemini turn, which has longer, better arc and a longer range. It does fairly more damage, though the armor and HP don't really change. 
but it loses the ability to shoot 360. Now, a thing that all but the Taros can do is they can all scuttle, which is turning into another unit completely. In this case, the Leo and the Gemini can be scuttled, which gives you resources. Not a whole bunch of resources, but it gives you resources, and turns it into a building unit. So that means that even if your base is wrecked and your main forces are destroyed, as long as you have one of these vehicles, they can be turned into a builder, and the builder can continue to keep you alive. In a 1v1, this probably wouldn't work too well, because your base is completely destroyed. Eventually, your enemy will be able to overwhelm you. But if you're going against a whole bunch of people, then you'll be able to work with it. So we're going to go into the actually coding of how the effects work. So we're going to go to Taros. We're going to go to this one. So the new coding part that we haven't looked into lately is actions. In this case, we have action one. Uh, the one is just how many actions it is. So if you had another action, it'd be two and so forth. So the first one is convert to Taros type tank deployed, which is right here. It is an action type of action. It doesn't cost anything to do. The text for it is deploy, which if you notice here, it says deploy. The time it takes to build speed, time it takes, and can it move? No, because when it's deploying, become stationary, it's not going to be moving. Now, if we go to this turn section, which by the way, you might have noticed, turn image now actually has an image file, which is the light Gemini turn that PNG. This now long, the animation moving start end is no longer needed as there is no actual animation. Oh, so this animation moving is just for the treads. You notice the treads go back and forth. That's the only reason for having the animation moving. Dust effect, which is this ground effect right there. And team colors on turret just means that I'm on green team, the turret color is green, the body is green. If not, it would be whatever color the image had it. So if that wasn't on and I had a red tank, the tank would be red, but the turret would be green because it's made green in the actual image. Now next we move on to the attack, we already went over this. Turret size, how big it is, the speed at which it turns, max range. Shoot delay, offset, we're going over all that. And here we have turn one, limited angle 50. So that means this has a 50 degree turn from the point forward. So it looking straight, it can turn to the right and left only 50 degrees. That's how that works. Then we have the actual damage of the projectile, in which it's 20 direct damage and 10 area damage. So the area damage is a quite decent radius. That's for the tar of slight turn. Now if we move on to the Gemini, doesn't matter which one they choose. Gemini light, light turn tank, blah, 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 turn tank, is limited to 40 degrees, so it has less of a firing arc angle than Taros, but that's fine because it has well, better range, better armor, better health in overall. Now, back up here, we have the actions. The convert to reconstructor drone. And it refunds half the price of the unit. So this unit costs 650. And when you scuttle it, you get back 300. And then you have this action 2. As I said before, we're just 2. And it switches to high explosive ammo. The price doesn't change. And high explosive ammo just does some tweaking with the actual projectile to give it more of an area damage and less direct damage. That's, I'm looking at the flak in the projectile one. Then we move on to Leo platform. We're not really going to look too much into the standard, since the standard is just a 360 turn. We're going to look instead into the, the large bore, or the long barreled one. Okay, so you might be like, okay, wait, there's two turns. But there's only one image turn. Yes. And I'll show you that in just a second. So down here, 
multi-targeting true since this does have two turns and so does gemini have two turns with this selected and selected on the gemini while it's on the gemini can be shooting at a target directly in front of it while a helicopter is behind it and the flak will turn to shoot at the helicopter behind it if this wasn't true then the turn and the flak would both shoot at the same thing and then once that object's been destroyed then the flak turn would shoot at the helicopter you have your shoot off, shoot delay, max range, aim offset. Then we go into turns. So we have turn one, which would be the basic Gemini turn. I'm looking at the wrong one. There we are. Sorry about that. I was looking at the wrong one for a moment there. So turn one is the Gemini turn. And it can has a shooting degree of 65 degrees on each side. And then we have the large bore, which has this image, Gemini turret, lar large bore. And it's not really large bore, it'd be long barreled. But the delay, it's changed fire rate. It's limiting angle, which means it can only shoot 30 degrees to each side. And if you look at the turret one, it has less range in turn two and turn two's range is here in the attack again not needed i could just put that inside turn two but it is what it is now if you might have noticed that this has a 45 price tag negative 45 turn two reconstructed drone when scuttled instead of 500 i like it to be a little bit less than half uh, just make it a little more balanced. Uh, something that I'm probably going to be removing in the future is that you can turn the... You can turn the anti-tank variant into the standard variant. I'm probably going to remove that because that seems a little off to turn the standard version into the anti-tank version and then the anti-tank version back to the standard version. It doesn't really fit too well. But... For now, that's it there. The price to do so is 300, and I think it's 300 to convert the standard into the anti-tank variant. So that's pretty much it on making vehicles. You have turrets. Now, balance-wise, they each have... I gotta find them again. Variant-wise... When you're making tanks and vehicles, you want each to have a unique purpose. Um, the main reason for the large barrel or long barrel variant is more damage. Simple as that. This is, you get a four or five of them and they're able to take on ex like an experimental or heavier tanks or destroy buildings. Leo, you can do a little bit more with. You can have it hit and run though it's probably not the best for hit and run due to its speed but the ability to have a 360 degree turn means that it can engage when in a group more targets than the long barreled gemini main battle tank it's far cheaper than the standard and standard leos to begin with and the ability to have a flag turn which gives it that anti-air capability means that it's a mainstay in the army it's going to be decent through mid game Again, protected from anti-air threats unless the air threats have long range and it has a decent gun and the ability to switch ammunition depending on what you're shooting at which again you can be shooting at infantry or a whole bunch of grouped up enemies or singular enemy targets or buildings it it's variable it's very modular it can adapt very well and the taros is just a decent it shows up, it shoots at the enemy once or twice, and then it runs away. It's also really good for scouting and taking care of those builders who are trying to build extractors. Send the Taros in, hit them a few times, run away. Another thing is, due to its speed, it can go pretty much anywhere around the map fast. So, for example, if you start off right here, you could send it over here 
and protect these extractor points while you're expanding. At least in the beginning of the game. So that stops the enemy from pushing forward and taking these extractors, giving you an edge to continue on. Now, the biggest problem right now with this military I have is I don't really have amphibious units yet. Yet. So, that's why we needed something like this. Basic air transport. When you're making a faction, you need to have transports. And you definitely need to have air transports. Actually, now that I think about it, well, I can think you could do sea transports. I don't know if the AI works very well to sea transports. But definitely need air transports. So this one that I made, I know I'm going in a more detail than I should be. And I'm just going slightly off topic. But since you're making custom vehicles, I'm just going to give you my input on all types of vehicles at this point. So this one, carry these vehicles. It's a transport. It's, it's decently fast, I think. Yeah, it's actually far faster than any other vehicle. I have the point, but it's also the weakest. It has no armor, 300 health. But the coolest thing I've made for it is it can land. And while it's landed, I have to add a shadow effect. It doesn't appear on their minimap. And it has the stealth tag, which means it can't be shot at. Unless the enemy has a detector. And the best part is, since it's stealth... Oh, that's something to keep in mind. So I modified this a bit midway through, because I noticed it also says I can carry five slots. There's more than five slots here. So, the best point with this is, it can land with the units inside it, go stealth, and wait until it's needed. But... It's a light transport. It can only carry two tanks. Which isn't that great. Something it does have over all the other vehicles is that since it is an air vehicle, it can go to these islands and then scuttle itself. At that point, it wouldn't be too smart to do because it can just pick up a builder and then drop off the builder anywhere. Anyhow, so that's just some of the basics of what I've been doing when making vehicles. Balance-wise, you don't want to make them too expensive or too cheap. You definitely don't want to make them too broken, though. So, even though these have decent armor and such, they're not, again, they all have their weaknesses. Two of them, two out of the four, are completely susceptible to air attacks. One of them is a light tank, very little armor, though it can deploy, which will give it more health and more armor it can easily be taken out by maybe two three air units though it's not gonna be shooting much down itself either for the leos they have 25 armor which means they can take a good amount of, of beating but again the reload's not the best and any long range vehicles will be able to take care of it they're also decently expensive at about thousand to produce and gemini which i believe is 600 or Six or seven hundred, maybe eight hundred. We can see right here. Sixty-five, uh, six hundred fifty to produce. It's far cheaper than a thousand for the Leo, but it also doesn't have the health or the armor. So twenty-five armor, eight hundred. Twenty armor, four fifty. Far better gun, does a hundred damage. You know, sixty damage. You gotta weigh the pros and cons. This can be spammed a lot faster, too. The medium tank. And you can see the build time. Tarl's light tank can be built <laughs> every two seconds. Which you might be thinking that can be easily, like, abused for Zerg rushes. But its health is so low that getting two or three artillery units can just decimate a group of Taros. I've actually had it where I right-clicked on enemy CP's base and just had to build like a hundred Taros tanks, like two of them. And the enemy base was just like, wrecked, like, ev like it was just a line of destruction because they're getting destroyed before they could get in range. Gemini tank takes far longer to make, 
course that makes sense. And then you have the heavy gun carrier, which is, takes slightly more time to make as well. But again, a thousand compared to 6500, no anti-air capabilities, anti-air capabilities, you get it. Uh, I might go into buildings next in my next video. I might go into turns, defensive structures, because I have a decent amount of those. And uh, go into the builder. So thank you all for watching. This has been Nick Renace, and I'll see you all in the next video.